So let's say we're taking the derivative of two functions that are being multiplied, all right? Now, if it's like 2x and x plus 3, I'm just going to distribute that through and do my basic derivative. But if we, uh, this is actually a step because then we're going to get into chain rule, which is like a group to a power. And you do not want to FOIL something out five times and then do basic derivative. You have then created more work and more room for error. So while some of these you're going to look at and say, I could just distribute and do it the, the short way, I promise you're going to need this process when we throw chain rule in when you're not going to want to distribute and do it the other way. So I'm taking two functions, one function here, one function here, and they're being multiplied. You can give it like binomial, binomial, all right? Um, you could FOIL that whole thing out and then do each piece of the derivative, right? Um, or it's always going to work out this way. If you look at it as two separate functions and you say, I'll take the little short, quick derivative of the first one and multiply it by the original second function, then you're going to add and do the original first function and multiply it by the derivative of the second function. So that's what they mean by this. Let's say my function consists of a u function and a v function, all right? They're saying to find the derivative of that overall function, do that little short, quick shortcut for the first derivative, keep the second guy the same, then add, now we're keeping the first guy the same, and we're doing the derivative of the second guy, all right? Um, your quotient rule looks very, very similar. The quotient rule is the derivative of the top times the bottom, subtract, and then do the top derivative of the bottom over the original bottom squared, all right? And so that, those are the two ones that we're gonna learn today, the quotient rule and the product rule, all right? And it just matters whether they are dividing or multiplying as to what you're gonna do with it. So let's actually apply it. Let's look at, um, the derivative of a product. Let's look at this guy. So this is how I write it, and this is how most calc books will write it. They'll use F and G, all right? And so I will say the only thing that I write differently, and I'm going to actually quickly just um, make it look the way I like it. There's a reason why I write it this way, and I every calc book I've ever had writes it the way you see, saw it originally. I write it like this because on quotient rule, order matters, okay? Because on quotient rule, you are subtracting. So what I do is I have you memorize the product rule where order doesn't matter in the same order you're going to use for the quotient rule. Why they flip it is beyond me on the one that it doesn't matter. So what I always tell you to do for these is the derivative of the first times the second plus the first derivative of the second. Because when you move that to quotient rule, that's exactly what your numerator is, just with a subtraction, okay? So those f and g's just represent the functions. So let's look at this first one. Ignore this. Let's say he's an h, because, you know, we're about to label f and g, okay? So <clears throat> this would be considered my first function. This would be considered my second function, all right? So... The first thing I typically do here is I go ahead and figure out what my derivative of my F piece is and my derivative of my G piece is. And then I'm just popping them into place. So if I were to look at my F piece or the first guy, he is, that first one is just X to the fifth. So then the derivative of that piece is my shortcut. Multiply by the five, take my exponent down by one. Simple enough, right? And then I'm gonna look at the G piece of it. The g piece then is going to be my 2x cubed minus 1. The derivative of that guy, multiply by that 3, take my exponent down by 1, and remember any constant drops off because it turns to a 0. The derivative of a constant is a 0. So now I really have everything I need to do my quotient rule. And I just literally put it in and simplify. So I'm going to say the derivative of the first, that is... 5x to the fourth times the second, g of x, the way it was, which is 2x cubed minus 1. That's all I did here. Derivative of the first times the second. Then I'm going to say plus the first one, the way he was originally, x to the fifth, times the derivative of the second. That's my 6x squared. So I literally just plugged it in. Now I'm going to simplify. This is basic algebra one stuff at this point, right? Distribute, combine your like terms, and you're done, all right? 
So I'm going to distribute here on the first one, five, x to the fourth, two x to the third, so 10 x to the seventh minus distribute here, five x to the fourth plus, that's not distribution, that's just multiplication, six x to the seventh. One more little step here, right? Called combining like terms. Combine those, write it in standard form. That is my derivative. Now, if I had distributed up at the top through and done my basic derivative, that's what I would have gotten. But what I'm telling you is do the process because you're going to need it when we throw in some not easy derivatives, okay? All right, so quotient rule. Quotient rule is like this example where you have one function over another function. Again, there's another way you could do this. You could divide each piece by that 3x and then rewrite them as exponents, okay? Which is a method we're actually going to use later on. But for the process of just getting used to how to do these, the quotient rule is now f and g represent the numerator and the denominator. And so if you think about how you did product rule, the derivative of the first times the second plus the first derivative of the second, that is now your numerator, but you're subtracting. That's why order matters here. So now I'm going to do the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top derivative of the bottom all over the original bottom squared. All right? And that's how this is going to work out. So again, the first thing I do is I just write off to the side what my derivatives look like so I don't have to calculate that while I'm writing it out. You'll get to where you don't actually have to do that. You can do the derivative as you go. I would recommend writing it out until you've done derivatives enough to where they're second nature. But the derivative of my f piece is just going to be my shortcuts, 15x squared minus 4x. The derivative of my denominator piece is just going to be 3, okay? And then I'm going to do this process. I'm going to say the derivative of the top, that is 15x squared minus 4x times, please, please distribute the bottom exactly how it was originally. And then I'm going to do the top, how it is originally, times the bottom. And I'm going to put my bottom right there. It is multiplication, so order doesn't matter. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is that negative needs to go all the way across, and that is the number one error that you get in quotient rules. Okay, hear me. The number one error that I see in quotient rules is not distributing the negative that is in the numerator. All right? So make sure you distribute. Over the bottom, how it originally was, the entire thing squared. Nine times out of ten, if it is not just a standard uh, monomial, I'm not going to make you foil. So had that been a binomial in the denominator, I would let you leave it binomial squared. I don't make you foil it, typically. The only time you want to foil it out is if somehow it reduces, okay? And typically you may see that ahead of time. At this point, we are doing basic algebra. I say that because this is where you lose your minds and y'all forget basic algebra. So at this point, we're just distributing that 3x through, right? So we have... That's a cubed, 12x squared, minus distribute a negative, 15x cubed, plus 6x squared, plus 3, all over. They probably went ahead and did this because it is just a monomial. I didn't write it. I set it out. Um, did they do the 9x? Yeah, they did. Okay. Because this one actually, I say that, and a 3 is going to come out of everything. So, All right. Um, combine your like terms. I don't have... Anything to combine with that 3, I can take the 45 and the negative 15, 12, negative 12, positive 6, and a positive 3. 
So in this case, you'll see a three can come out. Even if you hadn't squared it, you should have been able to see that a three would come out. In a binomial, you probably would have had a, if, if something reduces, you're going to see it in the monomial <laughs> itself or in the binomial itself. So I wouldn't leave this one like this. I would reduce it by a three. So I can take a three out of everything. Three out of this guy, three out of this guy, three out of everything. So my final answer is 10x cubed minus 2x squared plus one all over 3x squared.